What's up, folks? Mr. Byers here. Today I want to talk a little bit about completing the square. Now, this method of solving quadratics is not the most straightforward. It is one of the most interesting. The way it works is completely fascinating. We are literally completing the square here. I made another video on that. I'll link it in the comments. But um, description, sorry. But um, I want to do a couple examples with you. I want to go over a game plan. I want to show you why it works, or really how it works, what it looks like in practice. Um, what you're about to see, if you haven't seen the, the behind the scenes video about why this stuff works, on why completing the square is literally completing a square, um, I'm definitely going to recommend you go check out that video first. OK, that's what you need to do. I'm going to do some examples here, two of them to be precise. These are pretty, um, pretty, pretty basic examples of completing the square. It definitely gets trickier, but we're going to start here. We'll get some more videos later then, next week. OK, so let's dive right in. So first up, a part of my game plan, move my constant. What does that mean? I need to get this constant over here. That's what I need to do. So for that to happen, I'm going to subtract two on both sides. That's going to give me something that looks like this. X squared plus 8X equals negative 2. Now you'll note that I have left space here. That is because my next part of the game plan is to make room. Now to make room, I'm going to simply, literally, allocate some space. Allocate's a fancy word for make room for. Um, I got some space in the problem. Now, my next part of my game plan is half it, square it, add it. What does that mean? Um, so half it, the it in question, the it in question is B. That is the half it, square it, and then add it thing I'm refer referencing here too. So first up, I got to identify B. B is eight. So that means that uh, I am going to half it. B divided by 2 equals 8 over 2 is 4. All right, so now I've got my 4. Now I'm going to square it. Okay, so I'm going to take that 4. I'm going to square it. 4 squared equals 16. Now I add it. I'm going to put it over here. Add it on one side. We're using that space we just created. Add it on the other side. Cool. We have a thing. Now, what did we just do? Well, when we have it and squared it, we effectively created this guy right here is always going to be the exact same thing as x plus b divided by 2 squared. And that looks crazy. It really does. And that's fine. Okay. We'll get used to it. We got some we got some practice here ahead of us. Okay. So We've created a perfect square here. That perfect square will be, in this case, x plus, we said b over 2. b over 2 is 4. x plus 4 squared equals, what's negative 2 plus 16? 14. Okay. So for this problem, we have got this in a state where we can actually solve it now. This looks just like a square root problem because we have made it into a square root problem. We have created a perfect square. That is what the entire point of this was. We created a perfect square, so we're going to do that. Boom, boom. That's going to give us x plus 4 equals the plus or minus square root of 14. Radical 14 does not simplify, so my answer will be x equals negative 4 plus or minus radical 14. That's a pair of answers. That's what I'm looking for here, okay? You're literally going to have negative 4 plus radical 14 and negative 4 minus radical 14. Let's look at the next one. Now this example. Um, any questions? No, this is obviously not something we can factor. The factors of 2 do not add to 6. We can't make that happen. OK, so let's just uh, let's go ahead and make it happen with a perfect square. We're going to force it to happen by creating a perfect square. So first up, I'm going to move my constant. I'm going to add it to both sides. Then I'm going to make some space. So I've got x squared minus 6x. Here's my space I made equals 2 plus. If I made space on one side, I got to do it on the other side. That's just how algebra works. We got to keep that equation balanced, y'all. So next up, half it, square it, add it. Remember, we're talking about b. 
is negative 6. Half it. That's going to be b divided by 2 equals negative 6 divided by 2 or negative 3. All right, now we're going to square that. Negative 3 squared is going to give us positive 9. Now we're going to add it, so I'm going to add 9 to both sides. We have intentionally created a perfect square here. This perfect square, it is x plus b divided by 2 squared equals something over there. In this case, this equation is going to look like this. x plus b over 2 will be x plus, or well really minus the subtraction, x minus 3 squared equals 2 plus 9 is 11. Okay? Now we have created our perfect square. We can solve this just like it would be a regular square root problem. Take a square root on both sides. Now this is going to be x minus 3 equals radical 11. Okay. Add 3 to both sides. Stay sharp, kids. Don't forget the plus or minus like I just did. All right, and my two solutions will be x equals 3 plus or minus radical 11. Two solutions, easily found. That's completing the square, y'all. These should all be in your notebook. Have a good one, folks. Bye.